Some people have been asking us about our wood stove, if we're using it, how it's working, and how it's starting out. We thought we'd do a quick wood stove update. Here it is, you can see it works, and it works really well. It keeps this room and the kitchen really, really warm when it's running. We haven't used it too many times because we haven't needed it yet. On a cold day, it does really help, and it's gonna help save a lot of money on the heating bill when we use it. We mostly want it as a backup heat because if you ever lose power, it's good to have something when you're living in the north to back up on, to rely on, to stay warm. So as a quick update, for those who just joined us, this is a Pacific Energy Neo 1.6 wood stove. And the reason we chose this wood stove is because of the modern look. We really like the style of it, but also because it's designed for really close clearances to everything around it. So it can be really close to the wall, really close to furniture, and it's designed to be within eight inches of things without being a fire hazard. And that's really important for us because we're in a kind of a smaller home, you know, average size home. We don't have a lot of space to spare and we don't want to waste a huge amount of room in our home for a wood stove. So this is really good. We got it about nine inches from the back wall. We don't even need any protection on the back wall. It's just a non-combustible wall like drywall. And the same thing with the floor. It can actually sit straight on a tile floor. You can set it on a, a just any kind of ember protection, a glass pad, a metal pad, just any kind of ember protection. It doesn't need uh, thermal protection as well. So really cool and it's been working really good for us. Now, because of the layout of our house, we chose this location, which is right in the front, in the living room by the front door. It keeps the mess by the front door, which we like, but also it's straight across from our kitchen doorway. It's a five foot wide door, big opening, so that heat can easily flow from room to room. It's gonna heat up this end of the house pretty well, the kitchen and living room. It doesn't get back to the bedrooms very well, Heat does travel, but not easily. It kind of creates pockets. So I think that is any heating system, it's gonna heat where it is and not where it isn't. For the other parts of the house, we have electric heat throughout the whole house, actually. So we're in the kitchen now, and I'm gonna give you an example of our electric heaters. These are Stiebel Eltron electric wall heaters. These are just convection heaters, meaning they don't use any fans, the heat just naturally, I mean, I've heard convection used it both ways, but it's a convection heater. And the heat, the air pulls in the bottom, goes through the heating elements, comes out the top. It's no different than a baseboard heater, except for it doesn't sit on your floor and it takes up a lot less space. That's why we chose it. It's easier to keep clean and it's actually built a lot tougher. We weren't thrilled with the installation of these. Uh, the instructions left a lot to be desired and you got to kind of make it up as you go. But um, in hindsight, I would have installed them a little bit differently, but they're working good. And again, these are just, uh, this is a 1500 watt heater in this small space, whereas a baseboard would take up probably six feet of wall space. And they're more prone to dust collection. So that's why we chose a wall heater. And the reason we chose electric heat in general, a lot of people are afraid of electric heat. They think it's super expensive. And I think a lot of that comes from the propane and oil companies ads against electric heat. I mean, honestly, propaganda plays a lot into our culture today and the decisions we make. Um, electric heat can be pricey depending on where you live, but other forms of heat can be too. Heating in general is expensive. so. Um, the reason we chose electric heat is because it's actually not that expensive for us. We have a small one-story home. It's about a thousand square feet. It's well insulated. So these heat very fine, very efficiently without any ducting, without any fossil fuels, clean. There's no carbon monoxide and there's very low maintenance. That's why we like them. They're safe. They're low maintenance. Easy. Electric heat is really inexpensive to install. You buy the heaters and you hook them with wires. It's pretty inexpensive. Whereas a fuel heating source is sometimes a little more complex. You need a big furnace, you need gas lines run, electric lines run, you know, it can be a bigger expense. Now, if you have like access to natural gas, that's obviously usually the cheapest in America. Anywhere you go is natural gas, but propane can be expensive. Fuel oil is very expensive. Now, I've actually read, I believe, that electric heat is the second most common heat source in the USA. We have a really varied country, so there's a lot of different uh, climates, and a lot of that is probably more in the south. 
where the climates are more mild, but it is a really common heat that people don't realize. So that's why we chose it, because this is all you need and it's safe and there's no carbon monoxide and it's easy to take care of and maintain. Our electric bill has only run us, even last year when we were still under renovation, under 300 every month. And that's for hot water, heat, and all electric usage using power tools, uh, just everything. So I would say that's pretty good, actually. Keeping in mind that we are in Michigan, which gets down pretty cold during the winter, and we have a long heating season, but it's, it's pretty inexpensive. If I had a large two-story drafty old house, I probably wouldn't do this route. It would cost a fortune. You'd probably want something that can put out more heating units, more heat quicker to compensate for the loss. But again, depends on the house, the climate, so many things. Electric heat, I'm not afraid of it. I always love it. So actually, we have these units in all the rooms, and we just stuck with these 1500 watt units because I got a really good deal on them on eBay. So we have one in the kitchen, one in the living room, we got one in each bedroom, and then I got a little 1000 watt unit in the bathroom. So each room does have one, and it makes nice even heat where you don't notice any problems with it, and it's quiet. Now you'll notice in the bedrooms, we don't put our heaters under the windows. We put them on the inside walls. And now we're in our son's bedroom, and you can see again, we have the heater on the inside wall, not under the window. A lot of people asked us about this when we installed them. In fact, this is one of those many things where they said, you're doing it wrong, you're supposed to do it this way. A lot of people think that heaters should go under windows. The reason that we didn't do that, except for the kitchen and the bathroom, is because these heaters, all electric heaters, the number one risk is fire from things being blocking the heater or draped on the heater. Now, you shouldn't have any heater under drapes. Uh, curtains, like if you have long drapes next to your window, it'll sit on your baseboard heater and that can be a fire hazard. Now with a wall heater, it sits so much higher on the wall that that risk is increased. And that's why we don't put them under the window. Because if you had this under the window, if anybody ever wanted to hang curtains, those curtains would likely block the heater and create that hazard. That's why we don't put them there, just thinking ahead for the future and safety. And especially in newer homes, we don't have as much heat, heat loss through the windows as we did in the old homes where they would put the radiators or the floor vents underneath the windows where the coldest part of the room was. So I think they work well, fine on the, uh, on the inside walls and it's a safer place to put them. You'll find that also if you buy an electric wall heater that insets into your wall. There's some that have a blower and they sit flush in your wall, that those are recommended to put on an interior wall because you don't have to deal with the insulation and also that thermal break. If you have this metal heater in your wall, you won't have enough room for insulation behind it and you're gonna get condensation and cold and leakage in there and you're gonna have all kinds of problems. So it's actually really common to put electric heat on the inside walls and other sources of heat on the outside walls. If you have a hot water baseboard, or if you have a floor registers for the hot air, they're fine under a window. So that's why we chose to put these on the inside walls of the bedrooms, but in the bathroom and the kitchen, we weren't worried about that because you're not likely to have long drapes in the kitchen or a bathroom. It just isn't gonna happen. So we put those under the windows because it was the most convenient spot in the room. So you really gotta just find the balance of Where's the best spot in the room considering safety and room use and everything else? So I think I covered everything of our heating in our mobile home in Michigan, how we're heating our home, our backup heat, and why we chose electric heat and why we put them on our walls. So I hope that helps you guys understand what we're doing and, help, and maybe help you make decisions about what you want to do. Um, there's all kinds of heat and all different styles of heaters, and wall heaters, and different things. I think most electric heat is pretty comparable as far as efficiency goes and how, how much power they're going to use. I think it mostly comes down to how large your home is and how drafty your home is and whether or not it's a good idea to use those.